Hello subscribers, viewers and fellow RC pilots, Stuart here at Stuart Warren RC. Uh, oh, actually, as I say that, please note that I'm thinking of changing the channel n uh, name to RC Warren. Uh, quick little comment there, see what you think, do you prefer Stuart Warren RC or RC Warren? I can't decide, let me know. Anyway, back to it. Uh, you may have remembered that uh, in recent video, I went over the box of um, bargain engines that I got, laser engines for a very, very good price. And I had this mystery engine in there. This is a single cylinder laser. The other ones were uh, twin cylinder V240s. And I didn't know what size this was. I thought it was around um, 100 or maybe the 90, but I spoke to, uh, there it is there, I spoke to John at Laser Engines in the UK and he confirmed it's a 100. So my guess was quite good and I'm very pleased with that because the engine size is a good practical size, good for quarter style cubs and stuff like that, which I really like. Uh, and that's equivalent to around 19cc. Anyway, uh, we're in the back garden now and what I've decided before cleaning this engine up, I am going to run it because if we look at it, it's 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 a little bit grimy. Um, there's you know, some dirt around the top of the head here, the carbs dirty, the back plate, I got some cutaway footage just showing you the general condition of the engine before I mounted it here. It's quite uh, grimy. That says it does turn over very very easily and the compression is good. What I do need to do is check this plug. This is the original plug that came with the engine. It's an Enya plug and um, from what I was told, from what I can glean from the guy that I brought it off of, this engine hasn't been run in close to 15 years. It's well over 20 years old, I know that, because it's the older generation of uh, laser engines. Um, but before I strip it down, because I am going to strip this down, and before I decide what I want to do with it, I thought, why not just run it? So this is going to be the first run video on this channel, so I'm excited for this. I'm running on OptiPower 12% Nitro 4-stroke uh, fuel mix, I think that is. I think it's got 12%. Um, it's some fuel I got in the UK last year. Uh, I've been running all my four strokes on it. It runs really well. Um, I think they recommend around 10% on, uh, on the lasers. But I'm going to give this a go and it's got the Dynathrust 15 by 9 propeller on. Again, compression feels really, really good. I've got also a um, tachometer. Hopefully be able to get some RPMs. But in general, I'm just excited to get this thing fired up. I've got my new uh, bench for testing engines. This is the old rig. This rig I made like 20 years ago and it's still served me strong. The only reason that it's not this engine's not my brand new rig that I ordered is because A, it's not here and B, it wouldn't fit yet anyway because these uh, mounting beams for the lasers are quite a bit longer than uh, s you know, standard SATO or OS engines. So. We're going to fire this up now, disturb the neighbours, and uh, well, see how it goes. I'm excited. See you in a second. Okay, um, I don't think the carburetor was getting uh, fuel well, so I've raised the uh, tank a bit. Let's give it a go now. I'm going to prime it. Fuel is definitely coming through. Close that.
shit. Indeed. Um, I really, really messed up there. Um, you can see it didn't go very well at the end there. And I'm going to explain why. And the reason that I'm laying it all out here for everyone to see my mistakes is because A, I want to be constantly reminded of, uh, of this mess up because it was complete uh, error on my part, real stupidity, and I never want to do it again. And B, I want other people, even if just one person sees this and is reminded not to do what I uh, did, then that's very, very good too. It's all about sharing uh, experiences, good and bad. This is definitely a bad one. So essentially what happened, uh, a few nights previous to this, uh, I was really excited about these engines and I wanted to uh, have a look inside. I couldn't help myself. So I found a 332nd Allen key and this is the, the V cylinder but it's the same uh, configuration in terms of the front housing on the 100 and I unscrewed these four bolts um, to remove the front housing so I could have a look at the bearing and see what the condition was like inside. The great news was uh, it was very very good, very clean, very pleased, and very excited uh, to do more on this engine. So then I thought, well, I'm going to clean it anyway, I'm going to strip it down and clean it so I won't bother really tightening them up, I'll just do them finger tight. Of course that was my mistake because then a few days later I had forgotten that and I was very excited to run it uh, by the end of the day when I had some time and um, I yeah, completely forgot about it. And what we're going to do, we're going to jump on to a screen recording in a second so you can get a closer look of exactly what happened. This bargain batch of 300 pounds engines has now cost me an extra, say, 100 pounds because I've had to, what I've done, because I want to keep this engine, I think, and I like the engine. I uh, immediately got on the phone to John at uh, uh, Laser Engines, explained what happened in that the front housing had come off, uh, away from the engine as I was running, running it, which, by the way, could have been a very dangerous disaster. It may only just be a disaster of the engine, but that could have been very, very dangerous for me. So I was very lucky. But anyway, I spoke to him, explained what happened. Uh, I put it in a box and it's now on its way to uh, laser engines. I'm waiting to hear back from them. We'll see what the damage is. But um, I've just spent uh, another hundred pounds getting that to him. And if, if you know it goes through the standard service and that's all it needs, it's still basically another hundred pounds I spent. So that 300 goes to 400, kind of sours the sweetness of that deal. But anyway, I've still got some very nice engines. Let's jump onto the screen now and you can see exactly uh, what happened. All right, so we've jumped into a screen record of my edit suite here so you can get a closer look at the engine. This is the point that I start running it. So it flicks here. Go forward a little bit. Use the chicken stick there. After a few flicks, away it goes, it's running. Now at this point, I um, make it a little bit uh, leaner and increase the throttle and then take the plug off and it's running really nicely and look I'm really happy with myself stupid really really stupid little was I to know so anyway we keep going forward now what we gotta look out for I start leaning it and as I lean it I, and I felt they didn't really uh, get full the, the, the sound that I'm used to with full RPM on an engine of this size so you listen here I'm making it leaner smoky bit too lean and that there is maximum RPM it doesn't sound like it's doing enough but look look down here we zoom in a bit more look at this look around the uh, front housing here see that black oil that starts to leak out at the same time that I'm tuning that's why I think I'm not getting full RPM because my front housing is loose so we go forward here look at this see around here oil starts to come out behind the block here see that now that's just not that's not just engine oil from the uh, from the fuel. That's metal on metal grinding. Uh, that's what that blackness is. And you can see that the front. Uh, this is at idle now. It starts to really, um, really vibrate. Probably more than normal. And I should have noticed it sooner. Then uh, I'm trying with my tachometer to get a reading now. Uh, Seventeen hundred RPM. And you can see lots of vibration. More well. The engines always vibrate at idle anyway, but this is more so because that front housing has already come loose. Now listen to that sound. That doesn't sound quite right, it's because there's some clunking going on there. Um, and you can really see the oil coming out now. Now what I do at this point, I try and uh, lean it even more because it doesn't seem to be responding well. Sounds pretty bad now. I notice that as I'm leaning it, nothing happens. And then, as I go to idle, look at that. Let's look at that again. We'll come in and zoom in 150%. We'll mute it at the moment. As I come forward, 
Look at that at idle. Now, go down here. Okay, here we are at the idle point. Watch the housing. Here it comes. See it moving back and forth like that? Really, really not good at all. So there we go, very, very bad indeed. I did manage to bolt the engine, uh, the front housing back onto the main block. I, I could turn it over, there was still compression, but definitely it had a very metallic uh, clanking and knocking sound where it didn't before. I didn't even dare take it apart any further. Uh, I just boxed it up and sent it straight off to John. So we will see, but if you've got to imagine if that front housing is coming off, there's uh, the piston rotating at what, 2000 RPM? Um, so the piston and then the shaft, uh, and then the, the piston rod, that's probably taking a bit of a warping, might need replacing. Who knows? We're just going to wait and find out. If it's going to cost me a lot of money or even some money to fix, it's probably not worth it, sadly. And at that point, I've got to live with the realization that I've just ruined a completely good, and I mean good because it was surprisingly very, very good considering its age, completely good running engine, all for you know pure forgetfulness and stupidity. So I'm quite upset with myself right now, but I want to be uh, you know uh, upfront with you guys about these engines. And uh, that's why I'm putting this out here. That's the other reason I'm putting it out here. Learn from my mistakes, please. Don't make this mistake. We're going to see what it's like uh, when I hear back from John. Hopefully, fingers crossed, all will be well. I will certainly never make this mistake again. And I hope you guys don't too. Uh, we do still have the other two laser engines. So uh, I am going to run those without taking them apart first, even for a sneaky little look. And then I'll clean those. And we've got the OS-122. And a few little two-strokes that have come into. Actually, one of my first gifts on the channel uh, that we're going to have a look at. Uh, run, clean, and uh, generally admire. So thank you for watching. Sad news. Bit of a disaster. Well, definitely a disaster on the Laser 100. And um, fingers crossed for me, please, that the damage is not as bad as I think it's probably going to be. We'll see. Thank you for watching. Please like if you liked. If you didn't like, that's fine. Just leave a comment under underneath this video. And look out for more engine videos coming from Stuart Warren RC or is it RC Warren? Haven't decided yet. Again, please let me know. Bye.